Hello Saints, and I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all the new subscribers to this channel. Welcome aboard, and God bless you. In this video, I'm going to review um, one of Brian's uh, recent videos entitled, Brian Dillinger Did Not Create the Godhead Doctrine. I'm sure some of you might have seen it, and uh, like me, you were pretty disgusted with his satanic lies and stupidity. And uh, he just keeps exposing himself as a modalist, a liar, and a false teacher. And by the grace and power of God, in this video, I'm going to cut through all the lies and the heresy of that foul-mouthed heretic from Maine. So... I know some of you don't like to hear um, Brian Dellinger's voice, but we have to so we can hear it from the horse's mouth. I mean, the only reason I can actually watch his videos is because I simply know that he is a, a, a foul mouth liar. He, he, he constantly lies about the Trinity, constantly lies about Trinitarians. This guy's a foul mouth pathological liar, and by the grace of God, Every time he attacks the Trinity, I'm just going to make videos uh, attacking his lies and expose what a foul-mouthed liar he truly is, as well as a false teacher. So, please bear with me. We have to endure, oh, six minutes uh, and five seconds of that messed up quack from Maine. And uh, hopefully, I hope and pray that uh, you'll be edified. And, and, and strengthened uh, through this video. So here we go. Beginning of the madness of the heretic. All right, I want to take just a couple minutes here to answer a lie that's been brought out against me. Um, that, and it's this blasphemous thing that Brian Denninger created, the Godhead Doctrine. Um, okay, that's blasphemy. Uh, the Godhead is in Scripture. Okay? I didn't write scripture. I didn't write this book um, to say that Brian Denner created the Godhead Doctrine. The Godhead Doctrine is in scripture. For me to create it, I would have to be God. Okay, don't blaspheme the Lord. All right, but they say, oh, no, it's the teaching that Jesus is, you know, both Father and Son and Holy Spirit in one being. Uh, well, that's what the Bible teaches. And again, I've proved that in multiple studies, many, many, many studies. But they say, uh, um, 46 seconds into the video, and he just lied to his viewers. King James Bible does not teach that Jesus the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in one being. King James Bible don't teach modalism, which is exactly what this Godhead doctrine is all about. The real Godhead doctrine is in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7, which says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. It's true that the Godhead is in the King James Bible. The Word is mentioned three times in the King James Bible. They're all in the New Testament. Um, I believe, yeah, one in Acts, one in Romans, and one in Colossians. Speaking of Colossians, the key verse to Denlinger's uh, modalist heresy is Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 which says for in him Christ dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily Godhead simply means deity divine nature divine essence the being of God and what Paul is saying in Colossians 2 9 in fact Bible believers Trinitarians believe that Jesus Christ is God incarnate that's what Paul's simply saying Jesus Christ is God incarnate, God in the flesh. John chapter 1 verse 14 says that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And real Bible believers see the two natures of Christ in his person. His divine nature and his human nature. The divine nature, uh, he's God. Um, in, his, in his humanity, Jesus did have a body, soul, and spirit. His human body... Human soul, human spirit, just like we do. 
But as God, he doesn't have a body, soul, and spirit. In his humanity, Jesus had a beginning and an end. A mother and a father. In his divinity, he has no beginning. He, he'll never have an end. He has no mother nor father. So, in Colossians 2.9, we clearly see the two natures, his divinity and humanity, in one person, the person of Jesus Christ. So, no King James Bible does not teach modalism as that lying heretic says it does. Uh, he does I don't think he knows his Bible like he thinks he does. Continuing on. This teaching was unheard of in the church. The Christian church did not teach this um, at any time in history. There was no teaching like this. Well, let me just kind of clear that up. The church teaches. Interesting that, uh, that supposed Bible-believing Christians uh, would use this term. The church, the church has never taught. The church has always taught. The church, that's what Catholics say. This is why I say this guy deserves an Academy Award for his performance. The Oscar goes to Brian Denlinger for his portrayal as a King James Bible believer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy's an actor and a fake. Okay, he's not a real King James Bible believer. I mean, if he truly was a King James Bible believer, he would believe what 1 John 5, 7 says. For there are three that bear record in heaven... The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And notice that he doesn't mention names, like... But he, he says, like, Bible believers say that the church... Last time I checked Greg Miller's video, he said Bible believers. Um, Bible believers. He didn't, he didn't mention about the church. And when Bible-believing Christians mention the church, it's certainly not the Roman Catholic Church. As that foul mouthed liar thinks that, w that, that we're Catholics. No. Bible believer, when we say the church, obviously it's the church that Jesus founded. And it's a, a group of Bible believing Christians that make up this assembly called the church. I mean, this, this, guy, this guy has to lie, you know? It, it, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And we don't get our doctrine of the Trinity from the Roman Catholic Church. We get our. Doctrine of the Trinity from the King James Bible, right here. More madness from the heretic. Look, it's written by Jesuit Fathers of St. Mary's College. Hmm. Interesting uh, that you have professing Christians on YouTube that use the same language. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, do you have to be a Catholic to say the church? Again, when Bible believers say the church, it's certainly not the Roman Catholic Church, okay? It's, it's simply a group of Bible-believing Christians, uh, the body of Christ. It's church's people. It's definitely not the Roman Catholic Church. Man, oh man. More menace from the heretic. Weird. Here you have the... Page 120, or excuse me, I'm not sure what page. Yeah, I guess it's 124. The, here's the bookmark. The Triune God. There you have it. It says over here on page. Um, I don't agree, obviously, with Roman Catholicism and its false teachings. Obviously, it's gospel. Excuse me, it's, it's gospel is a gospel of works, work salvation. And I certainly don't agree with the the mass and the the blasphemous satanic doctrine of transubstantiation. But the Jesuit fathers, I will give them credit, they got it right when it says that God is a triune God. I agree with them not because I'm a Roman Catholic. I agree with them because that's what this King James Bible says. That we the Bible believing Christians worship a triune God who exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God and three persons. And we, we don't violate to the, the law of Moses when it says in Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, is, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
Yeah, we believe one Lord. Absolutely. But we believe this one Lord exists as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He is not a solitary being like man is. And Denley, and Denley is trying to get God to be more like us, which is absolutely stupid. No, the God of the Bible is a triune God who exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is the God that we, as Bible-believing Christians, love, worship, and serve. It's scripture, Bible, not man-made tradition. All right, more madness from the heretic. Page 125. Uh, we also, this is the Council of Rome in 382. Okay. It says, we also, number two, we also anathematize those who follow the error of Sibelius, saying that the Father is the same person as the Son. Once again, I'm not a Roman Catholic, never have been, never will be. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God in the English language. And I believe this precious book when it says that Jesus said, I and my Father are one. They're not one the same person as that foul-mouthed liar teaches in his videos. He, he, I, again, he hasn't, he, has, he, hasn't, he hasn't proved it. He, he hasn't proved from Scripture that uh, this Godhead doctrine of Jesus being the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and one being. The only thing he has proven that he's a liar and a false teacher. Um, so I agree with the Jesuit fathers. Yeah, anathematize, anathematize those who, who are heretics. Except the Bible has its own version of an, 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 anathematizing someone. And that's in Romans chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, which says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Brian Dillinger is a heretic, and he is to be marked and avoided as a heretic a false teacher and a bald-faced liar Be and he's basically calling the Lord Jesus Christ a liar Jesus Jesus Christ is God he knows exactly what he's talking about he knows who he is and when he says I and my father are one he's definitely not saying that we, we, we he, he and the father are one and the same person when we read his words, we see that Jesus and the father are two distinct persons in the Godhead and yet they're one there's an inseparable union between the Father and the Son. So plain as day when we read it and believe it. <sighs> Continuing on. Right there. So, you see, Bible believers have always been called heretics by the Catholic Church. Let me get my bookmark here quick. Yeah, Bible believers have been called heretics by Roman Catholics, but... Here's the twist. You disagree with what Brian Denler says. You're labeled a Catholic, a Jesuit, and a lost person. And he accused Bible-believing Christians of being Catholics or have a spirit of a Catholic. In one of his videos entitled How to, um, how to Recognize a Papist Devil, he's basically saying like uh, true Bible-believing Christians have a Catholic spirit. Um, I see a Catholic spirit in Denlinger because uh, being a Pope. And not only that, cult leaders, he is a cult leader because he has a characteristic of a cult leader. Cult leader usually use that kind of language to keep its followers in line from disagreeing with them, you know, and has this us against the world mentality. That's that's what I see in, in Denlinger, and it's really sick. So, you disagree with him, you're called a Catholic, you're called Jesuit, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he, he has the characteristics of a cult leader right there. And anyone following this guy, or listening to this guy, is going to be, he's going to be messed up just like he is. More madness from the heretic. And, uh, 
382, they were condemning a man, this Sibelius guy, and I have no idea what else he taught, but the fact of the matter is somebody saying, Brian Denlinger has invented this teaching that the Father and the Son are one and the same person, um, they're lying. It was condemned in 382 at the Council of Rome. Wrong. It was condemned by Tertullian against Praxius. It was Praxius who first taught that that modalist heresy of Jesus being both the Father and the Son. I have read parts of Tertullian's work against Praxius, and let me let me quote quote it here. This is um, page twenty seven. Um, Tertullian writing against Praxius. And as I already mentioned, Praxis' uh, heresy was that Jesus was being both the Father and the Son. Um, this was 200 years before the Roman Catholic Church came on the scene. Tertullian wrote, But we both always and now more than before, as better instructed by the paraclete, with the Holy Spirit, who of course leads us into all truth, believe indeed in one God, but subject to this arrangement, which we call economy, that to the one God there should also belong a son, his own word who has come forth from him, through whom all things were made and without whom nothing was made, that it was he who was put by the Father into the Virgin and born from her both man and God, son of man and son of God, surnamed Jesus Christ, that it was he who suffered died and was buried according to the scriptures and was raised again by the father and being taken back into heaven is seated at the right hand of the father and will come to judge the living and the dead who afterwards according to his promise sent from the father the holy spirit the paraclete the sanctifier of the faith of them who believe in the father and the son and the holy spirit that this rule of faith has run its course from the beginning of the gospel, even before the days of all the earlier heretics, and much more before the days of Praxius, who is but of yesterday will be proved as much by the very succession of all the heretics as it will be by the very modernity of the Praxius of yesterday. The doctrine of the Trinity is not a Roman Catholic doctrine. It is a crucial, fundamental Bible doctrine. Rooted in the King James Bible. And Bible-believing Christians have believed the doctrine of the Trinity from the very beginning. Long before the Roman Catholic Church came on the scene. Let me read another quote from <coughs> Tertullian's work against Praxius. And I'm reading on page 30. Tertullian says this, as if by parody, oh, sorry, um, and this applies to, especially to the perversity that it that thinks it possesses the undiluted truth and holding the view that it must not believe in one God in any other way than by saying that this selfsame God is both Father, Son, and Spirit. As if by parity of reasoning, one of these were not all, since all come from one, of course, through unity of nature, and as if, nevertheless, the mystery of the economy were maintained. This economy arranges unity in Trinity, regulating three, Father, Son, and Spirit. Once again, the doctrine of the Trinity was believed by Bible-believing Christians long before the Roman Catholic Church came on the scene. It was Praxius who taught that modus heresy of Jesus being the Father, Son, and Spirit in one being. And Brian Denler is, if you want to call it, the YouTube version of Praxius the heretic. Yeah. All right, then. Unfortunately, more madness from the heretic. The church has always taught. Well, that's true if you're a Catholic. So, <laughs> again, the doctrine of the Trinity uh, is rooted in, in Scripture, not in the Roman Catholic Church. And notice that Denler always reads the, 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 the Catholic Catechism and all these Catholics. 
It's not just Catholics who believe in the Trinity. Protestants, Baptists, Pentecostals, um, Reformed, the Ref Reformer or Christian Reformed Church or something. Um, the doctrine of the Trinity is believed by different denominations of Christendom. So it's not a Roman Catholic doctrine. It's a Bible doctrine. It's rooted in Scripture. You'll never hear that from that foul-mouthed liar in Maine. Continuing on. Right. Not even sure where the thing's at in here. But, you know, this it's just absolute blasphemy to say that I'm the one that created this Godhead doctrine. Nobody before me ever taught this thing that Jesus and the Father are one and the same. Uh, that's a lie. It's a total lie. I just showed you the proof from the Catholic book right there um, that liter literally uh, this whole you know teaching of Jesus being father and son it was being condemned way back then the fourth century uh, wrong it was condemned by Tertullian against against Praxius it was Praxius who taught that modalist uh, heresy 200 years before the Roman Catholic Church came on the scene. Not that long after the Catholic Church was founded, by the way. Again, AD. again a bald-faced um, lie. You know, and I've showed this before. The Holy Trinity and the teaching of the faith, you know. You can see all that stuff there. You can pause it and read it. I'm going to read over just a few things here. Um, from the beginning, the revealed truth of the Holy Trinity has been at the very root of the Church's living faith, principally by means of baptism. During the first centuries, the Church sought to clarify its Trinitarian faith. Um, then it goes down through here, it says, um, In order to articulate the dogma of the Trinity, the Church had to develop its own terminology with the help of certain notions of philosophical origin. Okay? They are admitting the Trinity, word Trinity, came from, uh, I, Tertullian was not part of the Catholic Church, he was before the Catholic Church was officially formed, but that pagan type of uh, philosophers and things like that, that that formed the Catholic Church, Tertullian was definitely part of that, he was one of the Church Fathers. Uh, he was not a saved man, I don't believe that Tertullian was saved for one minute. Yeah, typical Lordship Salvationists. They like to play God as to find out who's really saved and who isn't. We don't know if Tertullian was a saved man or not. I hope he is. I hope he's in heaven. But we don't know. Foolish to make uh, assumptions like that. But that's what you get from these typical Lordship Salvationists. Like that foul-mouthed liar in Maine. And that's where the Trinity teaching came from. Why on earth would you defend the thing? Why defend the teaching of the Trinity? It's really simple. It's rooted in Scripture, folks. Rooted in Scripture. That's why I defend the doctrine of the Trinity. That's why I make no apologies in being a militant Trinitarian. Simply because it's rooted in Scripture. Noah Webster defined the word Trinity as the union of three persons in one Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And that's the idea I see in 1 John 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Because the, the doctrine, even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible, the concept is there. If it's rooted in Scripture, you better believe that by the grace and power of God, I am going to defend it. And I make no apologies in defending it. The Bible tells us in Jude 3 to contend for the faith. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And by the grace of God, I'll never stop. Ever. The doctrine of the Trinity is rooted in Scripture. It's not rooted in Roman Catholicism, as that foul-mouthed liar in Maine says. Absolute lie. So... Uh, to say that, that I am the creator of the Godhead doctrine is absurd. And I'm seeing this thing now being perpetuated 
uh, out there that Dellinger is teaching a new doctrine. He's teaching a new thing. I am not. And again, go back to the scriptures. What do the scriptures say? Scripture says in 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Jesus affirmed the Trinity in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 19. Go ye into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Unlike that foul-mouthed liar, I believe what the Word of God says. King James Bible says, Regarding the doctrine of the Trinity, it's root in the scripture. It's not a man-made thing. You see, this is the standard. I'm not the standard. Are you sure? Because you call every person who disagrees with you lost than Roman Catholics or Jesuits. I mean, it, you got to look. If, you, if you've seen the video, you, you look at them picking up the, the Bible and, Oh, look at me. I'm a King James Bible believer. No, he isn't. He's a phony. He's an actor, as I already mentioned. He deserves an Academy Award for his performance. He's not a King James Bible believer by any means. To be a King James Bible believer really is to believe everything. Everything what the Word of God says. I mean, just because one word is not in the, in the, in the King James Bible does not necessarily mean it's non-existent. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. He's not a King James Bible believer by any means. He's a phony and an actor. And I'm not sorry to say that. He d I'll, I'll say it again. He deserves an Academy Award for his performance. Real, it, it, the most he's the most hypocritical person on YouTube. Really sickening. <sighs> Continuing on. Right? And the Bible plainly teaches that the Godhead is composed of Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. They're not one in essence or one in unity or one in whatever. They're one person. Again, Brian Denlier exposed himself as a foul mouth liar. The, the, the King James Bible does teach that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one, but they're not one and the same person. He's teaching modalism. That's not Bible. And we overwhelming scripture tells us if we know the King James Bible from cover to cover we would see clearly that all three members of the Godhead are persons one God in three persons overwhelming and it starts in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 when God says let us make man in our image he didn't say let me make man in my image he said let us make let us make man in our image one God in three distinct persons. All three were involved in creation. All three were involved in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All three were involved in, in, in the plan of salvation. So clear in the scripture. Brian Dillinger is lying when he says that all three persons are one the same person. No, the Bible says th th they are all three persons of the Godhead, they're one, but they're not the same person. They're three distinct persons. King James Bible does not teach that satanic heresy of modalism like that, like Lion Brian is doing there. You will never find more than one person in the Godhead. Yes, oh yeah we do. Oh yeah. Yes we do. It's all over the scriptures. This, and he claims to be a King James Bible believer. No, he doesn't. And he, he, he really has no right to teach the Bible. If you don't believe that, don't teach it. <laughs> and he, again, this guy's a fake. Oh, more madness from the heretic. One being in the Godhead. That is heresy. That is blasphemy. So, to believe in one God in three persons is heresy, right? Wrong. Brian Denlinger is a liar, heretic, and blasphemer. To believe that Jesus is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in one being, that's heresy, and that is blasphemy. Because he's calling the Son of God, who affirmed the Trinity in Matthew 20, 19, a liar, who doesn't know what he's talking about. But you, you just heard what he said. 
He's calling Jesus a liar. Jesus affirmed the Trinity in Matthew 20, 19. And by saying that it's blasphemy and heresy, you're calling he's basically calling the Lord Jesus Christ a liar, a heretic, and a blasphemer. Stupid. Absolutely stupid. Because Jesus Christ is God. I mean, it's an it, it, it makes sense why Paul says, let God be true and every man a liar. And Brian Dengler is a liar. He, he just exposed him as a foul mouth liar through that idiotic, blasphemous statement. <sighs> One more thing from that heretic, and I'll wrap it up. Okay. Be careful what you hear. Be careful who you listen to. Yeah. Just condemn himself with his own words. We got to be careful who, what we hear, and what we listen to. And let me say that anyone listening to that foul mouth, lying heretic is going to get messed up, and his spiritual life is going to get sidetracked. Brian Dingley is a false teacher. You just, you, the proof is in the pudding, folks. And I'm not just saying all these things out of slander. He is a false teacher because, like every other cult leader, he attacks the Trinity. The Trinity is a fundamental Bible doctrine. And by the grace of God, I am going to defend it. I'm a militant Trinitarian. I make no apologies for it. And that's why I'm making this video to warn people about this foul-mouthed, lying hermit who lives in Maine. He is not to be trusted. He's not a, he's not a, re, he's a phony. He's definitely not a, a real King James Bible believer. He's a modalist. The Jesus of, Mo, of Brian Daniel is not the Jesus of of the King James Bible. His Jesus is the Jesus of modalism. And it's really no surprise, you teach a different Jesus, you're teaching a different gospel. And he's a Lordship salvation, salvation, which is a different gospel. Man, oh man. That's why, again, I'm making this video, I want to warn people about this guy, and if someone hears the truth about him through this video, and gets out of that cult, I praise God for that. So, there you have it. More satanic lies and stupidity from that foul mouth liar Brian Denlinger. Um, in the next video, God willing, I'm going to gonna, gonna deal more with Denlinger's heresy and lie. And he, Is it a sin for Bible-believing Christians to use the word Trinity? Well, according to Brian, yes. Um, in that video, I'm going to show it's not a sin at all. And <laughs> just because, just because the word Trinity itself does not appear in the Bible does not mean it's, it's non-existent. The concept of the Trinity is, is so clear all throughout the scripture. It's rooted in Bible doctrine, not in Roman Catholicism. So I hope you tune in the next video, um, concerning, uh, whether it's a sin or not for king james bible believers to use the word trinity so that's the end of this video thank you for taking this time to watch it all in its entirety god bless you all and i'll see you in the next one until then may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen <laughs>